From the Kodesh Family Church, Germantown, Pastor Happy will inspire you with the practical and down-to-earth Bible-based teachings that will refresh, energize, and motivate you to do your best for the Lord. Join Pastor Happy now as he ministers the Word of God. As you raises up to walk on stormy seas. He raises up to walk and not to faint. We want to just ask for the spirit of the living God on this faithful day. Come into our hearts right now and quicken us. So he sent forth his word. His word brings healing. His word brings redemption. It is the light that shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend. I ask that you will arise and shine today as the light has come. As we are invited into the table that we will sit and we will have our portion today. We are walking out of here with the grace of God abundant in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank Him. For your mother thank the lord for your mother thank the lord for your mother honor your mother in the realm of the spirit thank the lord for preservation for it's a wonderful thing to have a mother it's a glorious thing to have a mother in the name of jesus christ thank you holy spirit Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Me. Melt me, Lord, melt me, hold me, hold me, feel me, feel me, use me, use me, experience it all. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 6, 46 to 50 and while he yet talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who is my brethren? And he stretched forth his hands towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of the Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my mother. We thank the Lord for mothers and brothers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated? Sit on top of your enemies this morning. Amen. Amen. Enemies have no power. It is a wonderful day, and I'm so grateful to see all of you this morning. Amen. Such a glorious time to be in the presence of God. And I'm personally so grateful to the Lord and so thankful to the Lord because to have you seated here on a rainy day in the U.S. of A. It speaks volumes. Amen. 
And so I was driving in. I said, Lord, bless them. Lord, touch them. Lord, let your promises be fulfilled for them. Amen. Amen. That is why you want to hear the word of God. Because it is true, the word of God, that your release comes. It is true, the word of God, that your redemption comes. Your breakthrough comes. Amen. Amen. But I also want to say a special thanks to our mothers. You know, in reality, I grew up throughout my life. I came to this country, and it took even about 12 years, 13 years, the one day somebody called and said, we found a picture, so we can send a picture to you. I don't know where I place it. That was the first time I saw just a glimpse of who my mother was. Had no idea. Throughout my life, who that person, how that person looked. But the only thing I know is everybody comes to a mother, a woman. <laughs> Amen. So I knew that I did not descend from the skies. Somebody gave birth to me. Amen. Amen. And so it's a wonderful thing. See, in the wisdom of God, we have today to say, Mother, thank you. And I always say, if your mother is not here, even in this country or not close to you, the most precious thing is call. Amen. Amen. And say, thank you. If your husband, your wife, it's your mother. Amen. Amen. Those children that you think you love so much. And this because of some mother that you will turn around and tell you have children. Hallelujah. Amen. So I think it's a wonderful day to basically today honor your mother. And sometimes it's not so much what you give. Think substance. But so much the love. You see, love comes from the heart. You see, and so our substance is just expression of the what is in the heart. Amen. But the words we speak, they're spirit. And if it's truly from here, you can just see the power of that word. And so I indulge each and every one of us, if you haven't called already, if you haven't expressed that love, I want to just plead with you. Don't wait until one day you realize that you had a great treasure. Your mother, no matter what. When you say Anna, he didn't say Anna, a good mother or a good father. He didn't say Anna, a wonderful one that is smiling. Oh, no. He said Anna. Anna is due to them. Why? Because without them, you won't be a seed on this earth. Amen. Amen. Even artificial insemination, they have to inseminate it. That's why they call it artificial. I mean, what? Insemination, right? How do they call that one? You have to take the sperm from someone and you have to put it in some mother before it can come out. At least they haven't created any human being in the laboratory yet. Right, my brother? Is it not true? That they have created. They try robots and then artificial intelligence and whatever you call it. But nobody has created a human being. <laughs> that is like you and I. And that is why it's such a great treasure. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's a good thing to do. <laughs> Don't just come to church and eat all the food on Mother's Day and forget about your mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a shock. Amen. Amen. All right. The Lord has a word for us this morning. And we've been talking about having loyalty series, and we've been talking about loyalty and disloyalty. Amen. I believe these are some of the wonderful words that we need to crave for. Say, as newborn babies, desire the sincere milk, and I believe this is a sincere milk, that when you eat it, when you drink that milk, it causes you to grow in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles. So today... My topic is on those who pretend. And I want to talk specifically about characteristics of pretenders. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor those who pretend. Those who pretend. We want to learn about their characteristics. When we see them, can we see those who pretend? Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. John chapter 2, verse 23 to 25. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. So the believing was based on the fact that at this feast, uh, he just turned water to wine. They saw so much that they said, okay, we believe in his name. He was called Jesus. Amen. Amen. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. So when people believe in you, in your name, huh? It is that they believe in him. They believe in the name. And what do they do? Oh, Bishop Dark. Oh, Kenneth Hagen. Oh, I mean, they will, yeah. You see the smiles. Oh, Pastor, today the word was so powerful. But he said Jesus did not commit himself. Amen. He did, he did not, you know, like something committed himself to the point of his head being cut off, but he couldn't even see it. Because he said, Jesus, what? He knew all men. He knew them. The next verse says, what? And needed not that any should testify of him. For he knew what was in the mind of a man. Amen. So, the word of God is teaching us that there are many pretenders and there are many pretenders even in the house of God. Hey. Amen. Amen. And what is a pretense? What is a pretense? Something you purport to be that you are not. And you show forth to people that I am this. I am a Christian. I am a believer. An allegation of doubtful value. Pretense, a claim of an effort to establish a claim, a claim or right to attention or honor because of merit, an aspiration or intention that may or may not reach fulfillment, that may or may never reach fulfillment. Vanity, pretentiousness. So what we see, is it the reality or is it fake? And say there are many fake people in the church. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Plenty fake people that sit in the pulpit every Sunday. They purport to be Christians. Those that the Lord has called to his marvelous work, but they never get to that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I said there was a young man one day. There was a young man who wanted beloved. And so his understanding is if I'm supposed to get the most wonderful woman that I want, then every woman that comes my way, I'm going to take them to a restaurant. So he had a girlfriend and then he went to the nicest restaurant in town. And as they sat down, they gave menu, and he chose his food. And he saw the lady held the menu, you know, and some styles. And the way she was even reading the menu. And he said, so what are you going to eat? There is rice, there is, ah, that's rice, I don't, yeah. And, hey, Amen. Even that day, chicken, I don't know, maybe some curry lamb, lamb in the pignon, mignon, yeah. <laughs> Amen. The gentleman walked out of that restaurant and said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Father, this revelation is so good. And next time, I had another girlfriend, took the girlfriend to the same restaurant. And this time, it wasn't easy. Even the, you know, the fork and knife, the way they even hold and the cup, glass, you know, to even drink the wine. 
it was almost like somebody that was walking on streets of gold. <laughs> and so the gentleman walked out, and that was the end of that relation. Then he found another beloved, and he took this beloved to the restaurant. When he got to the restaurant, lady, oh, before he would say, Jack, what's the menu? Oh, she pulled the thing. Pulled. <laughs> Chair, sat down. Pour water, you know. Just made herself comfortable. What will you eat? He chose, I mean, rice. And then the chicken. And, and the gentleman was observing. And began to just strike conversation. Oh, so yesterday, so how are things going, you know? Strike conversation. They talk, and they brought the menu. She had, you know, just herself, took the napkin, covered herself, and then, oh, come on, one, two, three. At some point, he realized the fork was not really helping. This chicken leg, I need to conquer this chicken leg very well. Amen. Oh, yes. Why did God give me five fingers? <laughs> Straight away into the chicken with all his fingers. She got out. A few months later, she was on the altar as a bride to this wonderful man. Why am I saying this story? It, 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 this story just portrays to us that you see, three things, it's something that destroys us. Pretense is something that, in the end, you may succeed initially, but then the end results are always no good. And so when the pews are filled up with pretenders, and I'm going to actually show you today why there's so much pretense when it comes to even the children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, a powerful man of God Derek Prince, I was listening to him, and he made a statement which I thought was really very revealing. He said, you are worth what price God has paid for you. That is what a believer you are. When you came to the Lord and said, Lord, I receive you, he said, the price that was paid for you was the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we sing about it. That's why we pray about it. That is why we learn about it. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. So at that point of redemption, the high price has been paid. Hmm? But then he continued and said, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your value at the end is determined by what price someone else offers to pay for you. Are you increasing value or are you decreasing value? He gave an example. He said somebody had bought a house and bought a house at 150000 And so the price for acquiring that house was what? 150000 And after some years, decided to sell the house. When he put the house back on the market, he realized that nobody was ready to offer 150000 for the house. What they were ready to offer is 50000 for the house. So in other words, the price that was paid to acquire the house has decreased in value over the years. When we come to the Lord and we receive the Lord, it's a heaven rejoices. It's a angels are rejoicing when just one soul comes and is redeemed. But the question is, over time, what is the value? Is the value decreasing or increasing? What is the price someone is ready to pay for you? They say, let your light so shine that others will see and give glory to the Lord. Amen. Will somebody see you at the end and they want to offer 200,000, or do they want to offer 50,000? See, that is, 
The power of pretension. Pretense. That is why there are many that say, Lord, Lord. But they get found wanting in the end because we don't come to the Lord with the sincerity of our heart. We don't see it in the pews on Sunday because we are really eager for the Lord. Understand why we come. Why I need to be in the presence of the Lord on Sunday. Most of us, it's a pretense. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing the word of God? You see, because there are two things. When God created man in the book of Genesis, there was clarity about what he was doing. The Bible says he created all things. But when he created man, he said, this is very good. And he said, let us create man what? In our own image. In our likeness. Is that not what he said? And is God a liar? But the Bible I read says God is not a liar. Amen. Because when you move from Genesis, and by the time you get to Numbers, what God actually said about why he was creating man, that I want man to be in my image, the description of man turned 360 degrees. Open your Bibles. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. What does he say? God, and then now they start talking about man. What is he saying? He said, God is not what? Man. Meanwhile, he said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, over everything. But by book of Numbers, he said, God is no man. Yeah? That he is who what? Lie. <laughs> He's no man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. Had he not said? And that he would do it? Or had he not spoken? That he not make it good? So you see straight away that there's a diversion. The thing that is supposed to be in the image of God has taken a different image. Completely. Is that not it? Titus chapter 1 verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So God, he cannot lie. But I said the children of men are filled up with lies. Man that can lie. Man that can stand in front of you. Wonderful, nice sister. And all you see, you say, oh Lord. What a beautiful creation. But George, you don't know. Is that? Yeah. That one doesn't belong to her. <laughs> Neither is this one. <laughs> oh, this one that you see. They were actually not the creation of God. Amen. Sometimes even this one. Hallelujah. So you are a man. And you say, oh, as for me, it's the bottles that I like. When I see that one, I'm kind of like, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Little do you know that all you see is pretense. See, on Wednesday, I was telling them, the reality is a wife. You go to the shop, and you buy a dress to wear to go outside. But you never go to that shop to buy a dress to wear to look beautiful in the house. Where does it matter most? The beauty that needs to be seen, who needs to see it most? Is it not your husband? But in the house, you are more than another brother. Because the Brazilian hair is out. <laughs> My brother, is it not true? Hallelujah! When he turned the eyes, like, oh man, what am I seeing here? Meanwhile, the brother, what he saw before his heart was kicking, can't see it anymore. And because of that, marriages are collapsing. The brethren go outside. And they're looking for another Brazilian bottles. Because that one, they realize it's finished. 
By the time they pull everything down, you're like, Lord, if you don't intervene in this one, we are about to destroy it. Amen. But the question is, if God cannot lie, and the nature of man has changed completely, you see, that is what we need to understand. The nature of what the Lord has created changed. What entered into the heart of man is deceptfulness. We become liars. We become fake. We become something that when you see, you have to think twice. When the children of God gather in his house, you have to think twice and say, who is truly a child of God? Amen. Amen. So who are we? John chapter 8, verse 44. It says, ye are of your father, the devil. And the last of your father, you will do. That is what man has become. It's all I've been created, you know, in the image of God. Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Hmm? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Hmm? There's no truth. When he speaks, <laughs> when he speaks, you have to think two times. Analyze that. Say, okay, is it true? <laughs> False or, yeah. When he speaks, you have your father. For he is a liar and he is the father of all lies. And unfortunately, the pews have become filled up with we are in the presence of demons. You sit in the church and the demons are glorifying themselves. Because the father of all lies has taken an abode. And where the spirit of the living God should dominate, the battle has to be so intense for it to be able to actually overcome. The atmosphere is filled up with all kinds of things. And that's why it's a struggle for the Holy Spirit to be able to rise and manifest the presence of demons. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 to 12 tells us, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. We don't want the truth. If you want the truth, you will seek the truth. The word of God, which is the light. The word of God, which is the truth. That is what believers don't seek. You ask how many people read their Bible in the last two weeks. It's a struggle. It's now a tassel. You are of your father and the last of what he wants. Anyone who loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. And so we gratify the devil. We give more room to the devil than seeking the truth for that situation. Than seeking to say, Lord, if you call me, if I am your child. See, that is why at the end of every sermon, the preacher will say, come and I'll pray with you and I'll lead you to receive the Lord. At that point, you say, devil, I deny you, everything about you, and I'm now the Lord. And the price is so high. But from there, are you going to live and add value to that price? Or are you going to decrease the value for it? Hallelujah. Amen. Have you gone home? We are here. Church is destroyed because many people are no more what you would describe them. There's known reality. Churches are filled with many people who are fake actors pretending to be loyal when they are actually enemies of the cross. So much artificial. Yes. You see, thousand congregations, and you ask yourself, why is it that the church today is diminishing more than other religions, Christian. Go and take the statistics. The artificialness 
the fakeness. Hypocritical Christians. Amen. Amen. Let's read Matthew chapter 23. It says, during Jesus' time, and this, it's one wonderful word of God that we always need to keep examining. Jesus could not just help it identify himself with man. He came. That was religion. Moses is our father. The laws of God has been handed over to us, and we are children of God. And he look at them and say, no, you are of your father, the devil. Amen. Amen. Then speak Jesus to the multitude, his disciples. And then what he say? Say, the scribes and the Pharisees, they sit in who? Moses sits. And so what happened? And therefore, if they sit in Moses' seat, whatever they tell you, observe that do. Because that is from God. If a man of God sits in Moses' seat, if he's truly a child, whatever he tells you, do it. Follow the scriptures. That is where your faith lies. But then he said, what? Well, but do not ye after their works. For they say, and they don't do. So they tell you, but they don't. Say, Saturday, let's go. We go evangelize. And we see someone on the street and we say, these ones are the ones. They don't know. They're going to hell. What about us? What lies are in us? What do we do? What do we understand? What do we seek after? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. By all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their what? Fire like Anybody who with English you can read that better than me. And enlarge the bodies of their garments. And love the uppermost rooms at the feast. And the chief seats in the synagogue. Let me put on the best clothes. When I come, they should know that yes, I've come to church today. Amen. Amen. And so that one, oh, look, it's the same cloth it brings every day. Material things, materialism has actually captured our imagination and our thought and everything to the point where we are as fake as the word fake. And so when you come to someone and you even say, Lord Jesus, it's almost become an enigma, a name that is so much polluted. Why? By the children of God. And greetings in the marketplace and to be called of men, Rabbi. Believer, Christian, Kodesh family church. Oh, which church do you go to? I go to Kodesh family church. Royal shepherd. Even within the church, the Christendom. Oh, yeah, I go to Calic and I go to this. I'm better than this one or that or that. Even division within the same body of Christ. The same people would say, God is our father. We believe in Jesus. There's even division. And it comes even to take a small congregation there's even division. But be not ye called rabbi. For there is one who is your master. Go to verse 10. Neither be ye called well, masters. For one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt themselves shall be abased. And anyone that humble themselves shall be exalted. But woe unto you. And every time you see woe, pause and ask yourself, is this to me? Who are the scribes and who are the Pharisees of today? You ask yourself, 
Holy Spirit, who am I? So, he used to be called scribes and Pharisees. What about today? What am I called? Who am I? Woe to you, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You will neither go in yourself or neither suffer them that they will go in. Your neighbor cannot even go to the church because when he hears the noise that comes from your house, all the, somebody, your auntie in your family there cannot call because when he sees you and your husband that says we are Christians, and what? You shut the gate, you will not go in yourself and you will not allow anybody to come in. What you see is all so much unattractive that they ask themselves, if this is what it is, then please let me take myself out. And let me not even associate at all. If this is what the Christianity is all about. Amen. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees. And then next one says what? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. You understand, right? You need to come to the Lord. You're going to hell. Lord is calling you. Transit center. Let's dance and make noise. You have to come. You proselytize. It is good. Because that is what the Lord has called us to. Go into the world and make disciples of every nation. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy. That is the duty of every Christian. But he says what? You will compass the sea. You will do anything possible. And when they are made, and they come into the church, then what happens? You make twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Instead of their value, the Lord put so much premium to purchase them. Now, we begin to decrease their value because the examples they see, because what they observe all around them comes to a point they say, okay, if you can beat them, you join them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's now, oh, it's our church. Oh, look at how oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. We are flowing. It's yeah, I quarreled with the other one the other time, but, you know, it looks like I forgot that one. That one, too, the way he's behaving now, it's like next few weeks, I'm not going to talk to that one, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You make them worse. Woe to you, then you become what? Blind guys. Which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it's nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple is the debtor. Oh, yeah. Don't come to that prayer service and see. There's no spirit in this one. Amen. But then what? You are full blind. For whether is the greater. The gold. Let your life shine, they will see. The examples they follow are what they see you do. A love that is flowing out of your heart. The weight of God that is guiding and leading you, flowing out. In that situation, why couldn't you advise? It is based on the word of God. Why can they turn around and look up to you at least for some counsel? We become those whoever shall swear by the altar. Go to the next one, verse 20. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, swear by it. And Okay, go to verse 30. And let's see. And say, if we had been in the days of our father, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. I mean, it says scribes and Pharisees, yeah. See, Bible is written for example. We're justifying ourselves today. Oh, I, I walk with Jesus and Jesus right now. See, it's because I cannot see him. 
if I can see him right now, I mean, how these guys, what was going to them? They were so wicked. How can you see all these miracles? And he said, Jesus did not give his heart to them. But then he knows them. What about now? Hmm? Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. He said, you tithe. Put the one that says you tithe. You tithe means you tithe everything. Uh huh. I think verse 40 or something like that. Did you see that one? You tithe. And so what the scripture is telling us, it's we are living in a great deception. And it is not that we don't have examples to follow. We should actually be having the best time in Christ now because there's so much witnesses all around us. And it's supposed to guide us into the truth, guide us into the path. But we become blind, seeing we cannot see. Amen. Woe to you, scribes and fathers, you, what? You pay tithe of meat and anise and cannon. Everything. In other words, yeah, you want to be faithful. But you have become religious. Instead of being a child of God, instead of seeking Him with all your heart and soul, love Him, you have become religious. Say, if Moses is your father, why do you seek to kill me? You should have known. And why didn't they know? Because they were not searching the scriptures correctly. But at least they were looking through the scriptures. In our time, the lies and the deception is because we don't even seek the scriptures. We have become ignorant of the word of God. Concerning your situation. Concerning why you actually even say, we have no idea. And so when you look at scribes and Pharisees, you say, at least they were better. They know the laws of Moses. And even though they were applying re religiously, at least they know that this and that. Amen. Amen. Are you here or have you gone home? We are here. So characteristics of pretenders. And then we go five and I close. Number one. Pretenders are angelic. <laughs> Pretenders are what? Angelic. angelic. Oh, when you see them, you have to look two, three, four, five times to know that what I'm seeing is actually <laughs> not an angel by a fake <laughs> angel. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor. Are you hearing the word of God? The spirit of pretension needs to be completely gone out of our lives. In marriages, you know, I keep coming to that. You see, so many people come to the altar. And we come to the altar with pretense. See, that is why I was so happy when I heard, you know, that example about the house and the value. Because when you come and you say, I do, but most of the time, we're so ignorant of that word, I do. Amen. Or sometimes we know, but we pretend. Because of what I'm describing, the artificial, the mindset. This gentleman married this lady. They had the most, one of the most glamorous weddings you can ever describe. Oh, the altar, and you know, when they were walking to the altar and they knelt down, you know, the whole setting, it was like almost you're looking at some corners in heaven. Everything was so perfect, angelic. It was angelic. You see the woman. You will know this one in natural fact. Might have been, you know, special creation of God. <laughs> and because of that, the gentleman, his ego that day 
nobody could carry it. And when the preacher says, yes, do you accept this one as your wife? For better, for worse. From today going forward, this is going to be your focus. You're not going to look at any other women. This is all there is for you. The gentleman look and say, oh Lord, thank you so much. Now the enjoyment is really going to start. It's before the preacher would say, I do. I mean, have you seen it before? How I do. I do. Oh, you do. And then the woman sheepishly say, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> and after every fanfare, behold, all the noisemakers have gone home. The reality set in. They opened the hotel door. Flowers and everything flying on the bed. The room, wine was on one table. Everything was set. Then the lady told the guy, okay, wait for me. Let me go and change and come. <laughs> when she came out of the bathroom, The guy said, oh, and straight away, collapsed, straight on the floor. What a 360 degrees. The hair was completely out. The teeth, it took, you know. <laughs> so pretenders are what? Angelic. They look angelic. You see, we're laughing. But that is the critical. That is the truth. Hmm? See, so we are like those who look ourselves in the mirror. Right now, you see, the word of God is mirror. And we look and we turn around and we forget what we've seen. The word of God is supposed to now project before you. So you see yourself. You see yourself in the mirror. Are you going to walk out? And then forget about what you've seen. And examine life. It's not worth living. We need to keep examining our lives. Amen. So he said, and no marvel, for Satan himself is what transformed into what? An angel of light. And so when the devil, I tell you in presence of demons, they are seated here. They are angels of light. That you are, unless you have the spiritual eye, to be able to see that this one, and it's why I said Jesus did not give himself to them. Hmm? He knew them too much. Too much to say this that I see is actually. They are angelic. He's transformed himself to light. Next verse says, well, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be what? Transformed as ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be what? According to their works. Pretenders are what? They are angelic. How is it that people are taking a marriage and then they turn the marriage to the most ugliest thing that you can ever imagine? See, every time I always tell folks, say, you identify something in this person. Were you pretending or has that thing completely been eroded? That today, the person becomes the most ugliest thing that you say. Amen. Amen. Either you were pretending, or I don't know what other words I can use to describe you. I laugh from the heart. Number two, and I'm closing, Pretenders have things in their background that are not consistent with their claims. Everyone who is pretending, there's something in the background. They never say. The truth never comes out. Look at it, Judges chapter 16, 
verse 15 to 16. My dear, what does he say? Delilah. She was a Philistine. Delilah's background was that she was a Philistine. But Samson thought, okay, even though Israelites were against Philistines, he saw something different. He told her, oh, I'm going to be able to change this one. <laughs> but because what Samson was seeing was a demon that has transformed to what? An angel of light. So when they say Philistine, say, oh, no, this one, huh, it's too good to be Philistine. <laughs> What I see right now, oh man, if I don't do this one, I'm going to die. You'll die anyway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And she said unto him, how can thou say, I love thee? How do you tell me I love thee when your heart is not with me? You mock me these three times. It has not told me wherein thy strength lie. This is a word of who? A pretender. You don't tell me you love me. These three times, look at what you are, you, are, you are lying, you're deceiving me. Why don't you just, and the guy just open up his heart. Now say, oh, you know what? I've been afraid. But now, let me just open up. I'm convinced now. And then what? When you're dealing with pretenders, their end is to destroy you. And that is why we preach. That is why we teach. The church should not be filled with pretend. The Lord has called us to build a kingdom that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And if you are a pretender, it is almost like you become the gate of hell itself. Because you plus demons equal to what? Distraction. Amen. Amen. Are you here? You've gone home. Hallelujah. And those spirits need to go out. Let people see you and know that this is who you are. Amen. Let them know you are a quarreling person. You are in the church, you quarrel. Fine. Hey, Lord, change me. Work on me, Lord. That's why I'm here. I'm a thief. That is why I'm here. I like taking people's husbands. That's why I'm here, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. I know you are working on me. Let them know. And then they will be praying with you. And when their husbands are getting close to you too, they will go home and say, hey, please. This, this one puts some distance a little bit. Hallelujah. Number three. Pretender is someone you cannot be at ease with. Don't be at ease with a pretender. The same story if you go from verse 6 to 10. What does he say? And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, where is thy strength? And wherewith thou mightest be bold to afflict thee? And Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven grained weights that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the laws of the Philistines brought up to her seven grained weights, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait. And so while we see you beautifully dressed, seated here, the demons are smart. The demons are lying in wait all around you. And an innocent child of God who just opened the heart and what demons are trying to use you to destroy. Destroy someone even in the house of God. You become a channel. You see, a gate of hell has opened to destroy others. Instead of the church growing, it's reducing. Instead of people coming to the house of God and say, this is my father's house, and say, next time, why should I even come? Hallelujah. Amen. Huh? They were lying in wait in the chamber. In the chamber. They were not like they were outside. <laughs> the bed the guy was sitting on what to under were people ready to sprung on him. But he had no idea. No thought. Huh? And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee. And Samson break the weights as a thread of toe is broken when it touched the fire. So his strength was not known. You see, a pretender. But pretension 
It's also described as what? A delusion. See? And I heard Bishop saying, delusion is almost the final end of mental illness. See? What is delusion? Delusion simply means somebody says, this one is not good. But you say, you know what? Oh, yeah. I love it. You are deluded, you know, to the point of not really understanding that in natural fact. It's almost like following GPS. And then you, you know that, look, the road is ending and I only see a river and say, keep going. <laughs> you have two point four miles before you think. And meanwhile, there's a river in front of you and then you keep driving through it because GPS says what? <laughs> Oh, I know what I'm doing. And you hear husbands say, I, I, oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> eh? An Id- idiocratic belief or an impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted by what is generally accepted as the reality or rational argument, typically a symptom of mental disorder. That is what? Yeah. And that is, you see, when we don't apply the word of God, which is the light. And the light shines in darkness and darkness does not comprehend. Then we all in the church become what? Deluded. Delusion is what is driving us. Lie and deception. So even if we're going on the wrong path, the mirror comes and you see yourself clearly. You turn around, you forget. You say, oh yeah, this is it. You see your destruction right in front of you, but no, you're not perturbed. You just saw your friend's example, but that doesn't change your heart. That's why the word has become null and void. No effect. It's not because people don't go to church, but because they are deluded. Hallelujah. And my fourth and fifth point, then I go, children are good pretenders. Amen. Amen. Children, they are good pretenders. They can pretend. My time is completely gone now. They can pretend. Genesis chapter 34, 13 tells us about Jacob and his sons. And they came to a land where their sister was defiled by some young man. He came to them and said, oh, if you want to really marry our sister, then we are circumcised. So you need to cut your thing. <laughs> and so if you can all cut your thing, circumcise yourself, then you will marry our sister. But be knowing to those people that their mind was different. Immediately they cut themselves, then they were weak. They jump on them and destroy all of them. As is how pretenders are. And children pretend, number one. Sometimes you ask yourself, why? Parents send you to school. Instead of doing what they send you for, you pretend, and in the end, it brings distraction. It brings heaviness. Teenage pregnancy. And the final point is a pretender is someone who can feign forgiveness, also know that. They'll come and tell you, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, please. I am so sorry. Amen. Amen. So I'm concluding today with a word in Hebrews chapter 12, and we're closing, 22 to 25. It says, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. That is what church is. That is where you have come to. That is what you have given your heart to. 
and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. Amen. Amen. For if they escape not who refuse him that speak on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, say, yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also the heavens. The blood you have received, which brought you into the kingdom, is a precious blood. It's a truthful blood. There's no lie in that blood. What redeemed you, there's no lie. God cannot lie. And if you truly want to be a child of the living God, say as many as receive him, to them he gives the power to be called the children of God. If we are children of God, let's serve him in truth. Let's take away every pretense. If we want to serve him, serve him. If we don't want to serve him, just be an atheist. If you want to be hot, be hot. If you want to be cold, be cold. Let's not be lukewarm and turn the church into a place of evil where many demons are destroyed. May the grace of God keep guiding us. May the love of God deliver us. May we seek first the kingdom and the righteousness of the kingdom. And all things as promised will be added. Shall we rise to our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. And with all heads bowed today, you cannot continue pretending. It's not about going to church. It's about confessing the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Giving your heart to Him. That is what the devil, uh, that Bible has commanded us to do. As many as receive Him. With a mouth, we confess. And with a heart, we believe. And so if you've heard this word today, with all heads bowed, I want to invite you. Come unto Jesus. And give him your life today. I'll help you, pray with you. And heaven says today, angels will be all around you, rejoicing with you. Special price will be paid for you. And you'll become a child of the living God. If anybody wants to give their life to Christ, this is a call. That's why I ask all heads to be turned down. Because it's your moment, it's your time. Just raise your hand. And I'll pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody? In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't pretend. It's not about anybody standing by you. Oh, no. It's about you saying, Lord, I want to receive you. It's my Lord and Savior. For you reaches to the heart. Yes, mountain. Mm. And it flows to the Lord West Valley, Valley The blood that gives me strength From day, day to day It will never lose this one I know you reach it for he reaches to the highest mountain, and he flows, and he flows to the low west valley, valley, the flower that gives me strength from day. This is one of the greatest commandments that the Lord Jesus has commanded us. It's a very spiritual thing. Without dwelling into the Spirit, we cannot please the Father. We cannot even receive from Him. This is faith. And we want to rise in that faith today on Mother's Day.
and our mothers, everyone. I want you to receive something great for yourself today. Or oh, just rising up in faith. Mark eleven twenty four. Every time your heart desire and you come to moments like this, if you believe, you will receive what you ask. And I want you to believe that this is the body of Christ. So he told us, as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him. It's a price. Our value cannot reduce. It must just increase. Because this is a precious body and blood that has been shed for us. So I want you, as you hold it, to just pray in your own words. Briefly. That is a heart of faith. When we pray, we basically say, Lord, I believe in you. And pray over this body and blood. There is power in it to do whatever you ask. And so if we want to ask anything, this is a moment to ask the Lord. And say, I stand in a moment where I'm going to take your body and your blood and pour forth your heart to him. Let him do and have his way here. This is a moment of redemption. It's a moment of deliverance. It's a moment of healing. Receive in Jesus' name. The promise of Jehovah is for the children of God. And as you have desire and you believe right now, receive it. So on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He was sitting with his disciples and he passed it around. He said, each and every one of you, just take a piece. And after that, he blessed it. He said, this is the body which will be shared for you. I stand in remembrance of that day. And I proclaim this to be the body of Christ. That when you take it in faith, you will receive the power. Power to overcome every pretentious spirit. Power to be a truthful child of the living God. You will rise and shine. And the glory of the Lord will be seen. In the name of Jesus. You want to just take it and proclaim with me the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let's take it in faith. Power is working. In Jesus' name. And in the same way, see, after they've eaten the body, he took the cup, symbolic of his blood. That was just about to be shed for them. And he told them, there is no other power than the power that is in the blood. This blood will cause you to go to the uttermost part. This blood will cause demons to flee. This blood will cause restoration to every situation that you think it's unbearable. There's nothing the Lord cannot do. And so this afternoon, I want you to walk out of here, liberate the child. It's a cleansing blood. No matter what you've done, it can take away all and make you anew. Demons will begin to see you and they will flee. Because the glory of the Lord is shining all around you. It's a promise we have. And so I want you, with all your heart of faith, declare with me the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. Let the power work for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your healing. Every time, this power works. Thank you for touching right now into our situations. Turning us, Lord, from children. Oh, Lord, that hitherto we had not known. But now that you've declared to us that there's a light and that light can shine in darkness that we will go after the light. Every spirit of pretension is driven out of the heart and soul of your children. We will walk in the truth and truth will set us free. We'll be children that honor you. Our marriages, Lord, will be stronger and stronger. Our children, Lord, 
will be the head, they will not be the tail. Our homes will be filled up with joy. I thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. In the name of Jesus. And the children of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shake your neighbor and say, Neighbor, this is a good place to be. And let's take our seats as we take brief announcements and we go. Amen.